the way that you need to approach this is exactly the same way that we've done uh, the problems with two terms in the denominator. Now you're going to multiply by the conjugate. We're going to use that same set of rules. However, since there's three terms here, what we need to do is we need to break it down so it resembles what we've already done, which is it resembles two terms. So if you group the first two terms together, and then you apply the same rules that we did with the um, rationalizing the double term denominators, you can solve this. Bless you. Okay, so if we looked at this, the, ra the when we rationalize, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. It's the same terms opposite sign. So we're going to treat this whole binomial as the first term, 1 plus root 3, and then the other term is root 5. Okay, so we're still doing the same thing. It's the same two terms, opposite sign between, so we had a negative to start with, so this is going to be a plus. And that's how we choose to multiply or rationalize. Now across the top, when we multiply, we get one times this whole quantity, so it's just going to be itself. One plus root three plus root five. But in the denominator, again, we're using the same pattern of information in that pattern is the special product rule. When you multiply the sum and difference of terms, it equals the difference of their squares. So we can just take the two terms and take the difference of their squares for our denominator, just like what we did with the others. So when we simplify this, our numerator stays as it is, 1 plus root 5, plus, or 1 plus root 3 plus root 5. In our denominator, though, we're going to expand this out when you expand a binomial square, again, this is something that we're going to review in Chapter 3, but it should be familiar to you. <clears throat> the expansion pattern for a binomial square is the first term squared. So 1 squared is 1. Then take the product of the terms and double it. So 1 times a root, or plus, or I'm sorry, 1 times a root 3 gives you root 3. Double that, you get 2 root 3. And then the last term squared, root 3 squared, is just a 3. <clears throat> we can square the square root of 5, leaving just the base 5. And so what we get as our new denominator is this 2 root 3. And then when we combine our constants, 1 plus 3 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. We get the new denominator, 2 root 3 minus 1. So what we've done is we've gone from three terms in our denominator, which included two radicals, into two terms with one radical. And so we're just going to repeat the steps. And using the same process, multiply by the conjugate, same terms, 2 root 3 and 1, opposite sign between, there was a negative, so we're going to change it to a plus, and then just expand it out. So when we multiply, okay, we need to distribute this, so we get 1 times 2 root 3. Okay, as I write these, I'm just going to write them right here, 2 root 3 plus 1 move to the next term. Root 3 times 2 root 3. Uh, when you multiply those, the root 3 times root 3 becomes a 3, times the 2 gives me a plus 6. I'm going to stack these vertically because it's under a like term, our, our constants. So I distribute root 3 times 1 is just root 3, so I'll add that again here under my like term. Move to the last term. Root 5 times 2 root 3 is 2 root 15. Again, I can combine my product under the same radical. And then my last root 5 times a plus 1 gives me plus root 5. So here's my denominator. If I combine all my like terms, 3 root 3, 7, 2 root 15, and root 5. Okay, as I rewrite these in my fraction, um, again, the order doesn't necessarily matter. But as far as entering something that's going to be accepted online, the way I would start it is take your constant first, and then just increase the radicals. So I take my smallest radical, which is the root threes. I write that term first. Then my next one is root five. And then my next last one is root 15. So this is the form that I'll enter my numerator. And then in the denominator, again, it's that same patterns up here. We chose our conjugate so that it fit that special product form of the sum and difference of terms is equal to the difference of squares. So if we take the terms and we square them, take the difference, we'll get our denominator. So 2 squared is 4, root 3 squared is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 1 squared is 1, 12 minus 1 gives us our denominator 
of 11. And so that would be the solution for 